your presence in this space is no mere coincidence. It's a meticulous and intentional connection designed to deliver the profound message of Apostle Joshua Selman directly to you. This message goes beyond being a mere source of blessings. It's a dynamic force, sparking the flame of greatness within you. Open your heart expansively and permit your mind to fully immerse in the opulence of this transformative diet. Before we venture further, I extend a sincere invitation for you to actively participate in this meaningful content. Engage by expressing your gratitude. Extend a virtual thumbs up to the video, share its wisdom with those in your circles who could find it beneficial, and become a... I speak over your life in the name of Jesus. You are and remain a sign and a wonder. You are and remain a sign and a wonder. May my God keep lifting you. May my God keep blessing you. May my God keep empowering you. There will not be a better yesterday for you. You keep going from glory to glory, from grace to grace. In the name of Jesus, every area of challenge in your life, I declare this week, may you experience the hand of God there. Experience the favor of God. Someone is getting to know Jesus through you. Someone is getting transformed through your witness. Someone is getting healed through your life. Someone is rising above curses and yokes through your life. Go and represent Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Satan wants to attack the program of God within a territory. These are the three things that he takes away. Number one, he takes away the, the moral code that helps to frame the conduct of the people within that territory. Number two, he will fade away the presence of teaching priests. So in a campus like this, you will find out as it is with many campuses across the globe, especially within this nation, you will have a set of vibrant people who love God. And one of the ways that the devil fights them is he can make them distracted with their own success and not raise successors. So he will be patient until they all leave. Then you will find another Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. And that is the sad and tragic story. You go from campus to campus, you will find this as a consistent story that there always seemed to be a set or a group, a season where there was such a move of the spirit upon the campus. And then either because of persecution or because of pride, the leaders who were manning the program of God did not think about succession. Hallelujah. We are not only celebrating 25 years of the impact of a man, we are celebrating the vision of succession. Because anything lasts when you know how to pass it on from one generation. The Bible says one generation will declare your praise to another. So I want you to pay attention to this. If you lack the knowledge of the true God, and number two, the presence of teaching priests and then laws, any society, any campus, any territory will be, um, it will just be shadows like walking corpses. It is the existence of these three realities that strengthen the program of God in any territory. John chapter 17 and verse 3, Jesus was praying and he said, This is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. So when you know God, when you have the presence of teaching priests, those who can mentor and build people, according to jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 it says and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart it says that they will feed you with knowledge and they will feed you with understanding i will give you pastors according to my heart and then you have norms laws a man whose spirit uh, it says a man who does not have a watch or a guard over his spirit is like a city that does not have walls and any city without walls is a city that will always be a victim of external assaults the strength of Jericho was not just the dexterity of the fighters 
but that the city was so fortified the bible says because the city was fortified nothing could come in nothing could go out is someone learning so i just thought to bring this as uh, an opening remark that we must make sure that the knowledge of the one true god is preserved we must make sure that consistently across any territory not just the campus that we never lack the presence of teaching priests that means you have a responsibility to pray that lord we should never lack teaching priests within a territory you can know when there is an absence of teaching priests without a territory uh, across a territory because the spiritual growth of the people will not be methodical everybody will just guess his way around god and come in with opinions that are not organized a disciple is one who is taught methodically line upon line precept upon precept if we allow believers to randomly fish out their ideas about god and the faith life we are going to end up with casualties unfortunately this is the problem even in many campuses now we have several campuses and several individuals whose ideas about god have not been vetted from the integrity of scripture and the presence of methodical mentorship so we have people coming up with all kinds of pseudo christian ideas they may not be insincere they are just people who did not follow the pattern prescribed jeremiah 6 16 says to stand in the way and to watch to look for that ancient path where is the good way he says and to walk therein and then you will find rest for your soul hallelujah tonight i want to begin a discussion with us that i think will bless us let me title this teaching the journey of faith the journey of faith we're going to explore how god works with men the the key to an excelling life the key to excellence in your spiritual adventure romans chapter 5 and verse 14 i begin my teaching now romans 5 14 the bible tells us Romans 5 4 are we there my apologies Romans 15 Romans 15 I was trying to pull up my notes Romans 15 and verse 4 Romans 15 and verse 4 let's read it together if you see it projected ready read for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning so that we through the patience and comfort of the scripture might find hope please look up the bible says the things that are written are for time in other words history is a teacher are we together that the things that are written are for time anything that is captured through history is supposed to be a template it is for our learning that means the way we move forward is by looking to history are we together now the things that are written are for time they are written for our learning that from the knowledge that is gained through history we can have the confidence to know that if god did it before he can do it again if god used people before he can use people again if god shook you i before he can do it again the things that were written 25 years ago all the stories you are hearing now it is not just a communication of the yesteryears of people he says they are written for our learning that means if you only hear history and you don't learn you did not benefit from it the things written are for time they are written for our learning hallelujah next scripture hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 we're examining ancient spiritual patterns 
that can help us to excel in our faith adventure here's what the bible says that ye be not slothful but followers of them there are some them that are worthy of followership it says followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise to not be slothful but that in your quest to obtain the promise in your quest to carry out an excelling faith adventure he says to search for them there are some them who are worthy of double honor who have been used by god and they have left marks in the sands of time he says to follow them one of the ways we learn the dealings of god is by following men who have worked with god are we together the bible archives in hebrews chapter 11 these men and he calls them elders and the testimony about them is that they obtained a good report it says now faith is 11 verse 1 hebrews the substance of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen he says by it this faith the elders obtained a good report then he begins to unravel the story of these elders one by one by faith abel offered a worthy sacrifice by faith this one and that one and then he says time will fail me to talk of gideon jephthah barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions and the bible says without us they will not be complete that means we are still on our way to to obtaining that status of an elder by following their path until we obtain a good report is someone learning he says all this haven't obtained a good report through faith receive not the promise we are the ones who will complete that equation there is still a space in destiny allowing you to come that at the end of your life when we list the elders who obtain a good report your name will be added to that the next 25 years if christ tarries and you gather here it will be you laughing now hugging one another and say we remember during the last 25 years anniversary i listened to a sermon and i took that step look the ministry that came out of that sermon look the business that came out of that sermon is someone learning so the bible says history can teach us the things written are for time they are for our learning I wrote here and I may want you to write it too. The Bible is full of men and women whose entire faith journey was captured from childhood even till their seasons of exploits. That the Bible is full of men and women. Isn't it amazing that in many regards you will find in scripture the lives of individuals who, whose entire lifetime was captured in the Bible. There are a few you will just find moments of their lives but the bible was careful to meticulously follow through the life of certain people from childhood until they got to the zenith of their exploits and even up to their transition i wondered for many years why the bible and god in his character would meticulously it was like following the entire lifetime of a man from birth till transition until i found the scripture that the things written are for time that means god literally took a zoom into a man's entire lifetime to capture moments that are rich with truth that if you can follow it's like a compass a spiritual compass that will lead you to the place of destiny with exactitude are we together the bible is full of men and women whose entire faith journey was captured from their childhood even till their seasons of exploits and many others onto their moments of transition for instance moses for instance joseph for instance samuel for instance david for instance esther and even jesus christ the bible starts their story from childhood in fact for jesus he was so meticulous he started even with his parents 
why would the bible be so meticulous you would think he would just zoom the most important aspect just tell us he died he rose up three days he is called savior if you believe go to heaven if you don't go to hell and it stops there and yet the bible even captures census it was as a time when census what do i do with the census it was that he wants you to see the conditions upon which that life and that destiny came so that you are without excuse are we together for many years i wondered why the bible will capture many details that i thought was unnecessary this begat this and when this happened at that time there was no this there was no manger there was it was at a time of i'm like oh come on please go straight to the point now i know that the things that were written are for time every detail captured reveals something that if god opens your eyes you will see that if a man could thrive in this kind of economic condition political condition jesus was born at the time when the roman government had dominion they were the powers of the dead world that means you do not have any excuse to not serve god there were people who were born during slavery children were killed for instance the life of moses because he knew that you will easily find an excuse that will excuse that will stop you from rising and you say my situation is because i come from ibadan or i come from this or my father and my mother died there, there is a story around my family that i don't understand and then he will refer you to someone in the bible to say he went through the same thing and he still conquered it they are still suspecting whether my father is my real father or not that's exactly what happened to jesus so you don't have any excuse i don't even have any friend during my time something happened all my siblings died i came from a family where all my brothers hated me as joseph all of these were captured so that no one is without excuse please listen very carefully the things that are written are for time they are for our learning are we together there are a few people like abraham where the bible just tells us straight to the point from the time they were already adults we don't have the privilege to really know so much about their upbringing it just tells us in summary terah was his father and then abraham there are a number of people like that but tonight i'm interested in the ones that the bible took the time to tell us about their birth the circumstances around their birth meticulously showing us how they grew are we blessed one of such people that will be worthy of our study very briefly tonight is the man moses moses had the destiny of a deliverer but then we see that moses had a very disturbing childhood there are many others that will touch but moses was a very interesting personality if you have the best circumstances of moses you should have a justification to live a useless life a child who was born and then thrown in a basket by the mother what kind of upbringing or what kind of birth experience is more humiliating than that do you know what it meant for the mother to just keep him in a basket and then in a river and say lord this is this one came from you i hand him over to you and then that is the end of imagine as an adult someone walks up to you and says god wants to use you but let me tell you a little story about how you were born one day there was a river somewhere around ibadan we just saw a basket that looked like a bomb and we opened it and found you inside you will first want to find out who your parents are and go and meet them and say so this is this is And then Moses is found and taken to Egypt and Moses was being trained to be the next Pharaoh because Pharaoh's daughter loved him so much and yet Moses would get to a point where the cry of destiny began to ring in his heart do you know the life of Moses is very interesting because even if he didn't serve God from an earth standpoint he still would have been a success 
he still subjected himself to the principles that will make any man succeed under egypt he would have been properly mentored the only thing is that he would not serve destiny from a kingdom standpoint he was going to be the next pharaoh and one thing led to the other killed an egyptian and he decided to take that risk with his destiny and run away was at the back side of the mountain for 40 years you know what it meant for moses to give up the royalty and the honor that status in egypt and then one time an encounter came to his life and shifted him to another dimension to cut the long story short that young boy who was pushed in that basket had the destiny of delivering the people oh my god who knows that someone who is sitting here right now regardless i don't care the story around your life only god knows what has been written he said lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written as it is written please sit down i want you to please pay attention there are three seasons as far as your faith adventure and the adventure of destiny fulfillment is concerned there are three major seasons that must be captured in your life let me just let me just jump there for the sake of time there are three major seasons in your journey of faith in your faith adventure as far as fulfilling the purposes of god for your life is concerned there are three major seasons that i want you to learn listen if you miss any of this season except by the mercy of god you can be sure you will abort destiny are you ready the first phase and the first season of any man's life is called the season of preparation the season of preparation there is nobody who becomes mighty by default there is nobody who becomes mighty just by wishing you must pass through the first path and the first season that befalls all men whether you utilize it or not and you see all the seasons of a man's life are time dependent that means for any time you waste time you are wasting the unit of destiny listen very carefully the season of preparation there are five things that god expects to happen to you within this season and if those five things do not happen in that season it cannot qualify you for your next season is someone learning already the season of preparation you want to be great you want to be mighty through god you want to do much for the kingdom within your lifetime pay attention to your season of preparation there are five things that must happen to you within this season number one very quickly you must discover god your season of preparation is your moment of encounter listen most people today want to live a great life and all they are looking for is the name of the ministry this is not how we started the protocol of greatness is found in genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning god everybody say it in the beginning not fame in the beginning not a name in the beginning not power in the beginning not rema if you violate this protocol you are going to destroy your life there is no great man who started with the desire to be great in the beginning god this is the first message that must be restored especially to the generation coming for many in the beginning power for many in the beginning titles for many in the beginning platform and the name of ministry for many in the beginning csc registration when we started with god it was a blind passion for the things of god we did not even know ourselves some of us came from families where by 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 
our biological whatever it is we did not even know that we had much your season of preparation is the time to press into God you heard what they were saying here passion for God how does a student come into class and then puts his ego down and stands before people and talks about Jesus very boldly in the beginning God in your season of preparation that is the time where you discover God Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32 the B part says but the people that do know they are God your season of preparation is the season where God must move from being your pastor's God to being your God he must move from being your mentor's God to your God is the season of a personal revelation thank God for the leverage of what somebody told you about God but you have to now know him Lord reveal yourself to me because when you stand before Pharaoh he will ask you who sent you Pharaoh is not just you can't bring a rod and stand before Pharaoh and say Pharaoh God sent me say which one and you'll be surprised that you yourself you say I don't know are there many I never knew there were many there are many people today who have started ministries respectfully speaking who have started all kinds of things and then when the attacks and the vicissitudes of life confront them that is Pharaoh saying who sent you they stand in shock and in frustration I didn't answer that question before I started but the people who know they are God listen can I tell you I wish I can tell you you will not stand before mountains and valleys in your life as anybody who has been mightily used by God we do not know the mountains and the valleys that stand before you from where you are to where you need to go your confidence is not any signature or any uncle signs for you it is the God that you know how will your bills come the God that you know how will the members come the God that you know how will you survive your name being taken to shrines the God that you know how are you sure that the naysayers against your life will ah he said unto thee O Lord do I lift up my eyes he says oh my God I trust in you let me not be ashamed and let my enemies not triumph over me listen very carefully God is speaking to you tonight every great man you see today nobody gave them any guarantee don't you think somebody said come I will give you land don't you think somebody said come I will give you members we live in a generation of people who do not know God clamoring for guarantees can you stand by me as I start ministry there are people who enter the campus carrying only one box where their school fees of the next session will come from they did not know blind faith obedience please listen very carefully some of you God is shaking away this auxiliary scientific faith that does not produce results Please sit down. I think you should work on something, maybe media. Something is playing in the background. So, season of preparation number one, you discover God. Let me tell you this when you start your journey, and this is the advantage of the campus, aside from the privilege to learn the campus is a platform that gives you the liberty to know god there are many families because of their biases as to certain aspects of the kingdom they may not give you the liberty to worship and pray and do night vigil so god uses the disguise of your academic pursuit and plants you in an atmosphere that gives you the privilege you may never get at home there are many people who will not be here if they were in their homes 
the parents will not agree some by five o'clock six no matter how old you are once you are under that covering you must be home so he gave you admission even though you were not qualified you still don't know why the admission still came it is a time to know god unfortunately the devil too is waiting for you at the gate of the campus as soon as you arrive he would distract you with all kinds of things can i tell you ask any most of the people you celebrate today their their season of preparation started they utilize their moments on campus there is no great man who god used mightily that had the privilege of passing through a campus who cannot show you their places of prayer their points of prayer their points of fasting moments where you prayed moments where you fasted no money but you fasted or you carried everything and gave it away and it will look as if you are irresponsible let me tell you the truth our love for god was vetted by the purity of our pursuit when i started working with god i never knew that they used to give a man of god honorarium that you preach and you count 10 naira believe me when i tell you to know that you preach and you actually put an envelope i probably will run away knowing god vets the purity it 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 reaffirms the purity of your desire because if god does not do that hard check let me tell you by the time the glamour of success comes you will not last is the reason why many today their first car is the window that leads them to perdition their first international ministry is what dries up their prayer life because they did not stay with god to love him and to know him above all things times where others sleep is why others are awake lord most of our visions and prophetic encounters started in the place of prayer not in the place of looking for power genuine search for god that's how we started receiving songs from the spirit genuine search for god help them please genuine power forged by the fires of his presence No TV, no radio, no nothing, no phones, but God. In the beginning, God. For someone, God is saying, I'm still waiting for you where you left me. You started with me, but your first invitation, they gave you an opportunity and you left me. And you believe you are doing ministry. He said, in the year that King Uzziah died, something must die for you to see God your pride must die your ambition must die when you come to him he takes away that which is alive in you and he becomes your only life in the year king uzziah died i saw the lord in the year my pride died in the year my lust died in the year flesh died i saw the lord so the first in your season of preparation god gives you time there is a time frame to pursue god and to seek him sincerely and let me tell you the truth you cannot do all the socialization you want to do and find god i'm sorry i hate to be a bearer of bad news in economics there's something called opportunity cost is that true You have to make quality choices. You have to discover the God of heaven. Lord, so this is how you are. And let me tell you this. The seed for finding God is time. You will never truly encounter the God of the Bible if you cannot sow the seed of time. 
don't give God five minutes two verses ten minutes prayer I want to have an encounter of someone who has dedicated himself literally become the sacrifice on the altar God is not unjust my dear people and let me tell you the truth the bankruptcy of the genuineness of your encounter will tell later in ministry it's true is the reason why today there are people who are weak very very weak they did not build capacity can i tell you this on campus you most likely don't have children you most likely are not married you most likely may not be the person shouldering your finances that time you have you will not have it again there are today ask any man of god to set aside time for god is a luxury you have to you have to go the extra mile to create certain things. He said, eat for the journey is far. For someone, this is a word for you. Instead of running around trying to announce yourself and say, you've not invited me. Thank God that nobody knows you yet. And stop wasting your time trying to make everybody know you. That is not the key to ministry. Just because you have advantage of internet and YouTube, you can shout your name and be surprised. If God does not say, hear ye him, you will waste your time. You see, this generation needs help. We need to redefine our priorities. Because we are used to celebrity living. All I need to do is just conjure something. Let people just know I'm there and that's it. When the devil finds out that you are determined to destroy yourself, he will be the one to open the door for you. Because it is knowing God that will help you to know which door is anointed and which door is not anointed, even if it is opened. Let's hurry up because of time. Number two, in the place of preparation, you not only discover God, you discover yourself. Exodus chapter 4. We we'll begin our reading from verse 1. One of the beauties of knowing God is that in finding God, you find yourself. Man was created in the image and the likeness of God. So the only way to really know yourself and to know your true worth is to know the God that created you. Our world today suffers grossly from identity crisis and it is a direct product of not knowing God. Are we together? It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we have been called the sons of God. It says, Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 1. Watch this. Moses answered and said, Behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say, The Lord had not appeared unto you. Are you seeing what he's saying now? They will believe you, but me, the vessel, there is a problem with me. They are not going to believe me. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto him, what is in your hand? And he said, a rod. We'll come there shortly. Verse 3. And he said, cast it on the ground. He cast it on the ground. It became a serpent. Look at God subjecting, subjecting Moses through several experiences. Verse 4. And the Lord said, put your hand and take it by yourself by the tail. You know what he was doing to him? I'll explain to you shortly. It became a rod in his hand, verse 5. It says that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had appeared unto thee. Verse 6. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, put now thy hand in thy bosom. And he put his hand, and when he took it back, it was as leprous as snow. Verse 7. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom. He plucked it out and behold, it turned like his flesh now. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the letter sign. Now follow carefully. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take water out of the river, pour it upon dry land, and the water which thou hast taken shall become blood. We are reading to verse 12 thereabout. I want to point out something for you. And Moses said unto the Lord, watch this now, look at all the things God was doing to Moses. 
remember god was saying moses you do it participate in that process of the supernatural so that you will believe in yourself i want to do something with you so that that doubt and fear you have will dry up in his presence and moses is still complaining oh my lord i am not eloquent it is only when you know him that he will know you because if you don't know what god has made out of you the devil would tell you many things about you you mean is you that god is going to send out of this family you mean god does not have any other preacher that you come and carry you but in the place of knowing god he will reveal something to you about yourself that will give you confidence regardless moses said oh my lord i am not eloquent neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant but i am slow of speech and is on on of a slow tongue can you imagine this so imagine moses's mindset about himself god is saying i want to use you and he's bringing everything oh this you see god you want to send me i am not this i am not that i am not this verse 11 and the lord said unto him who had made man's mouth in other words listen listen you're looking down on yourself is a mockery to my artistry and creativity i took time to create you and every time you look at yourself and say god you didn't try enough if only you added this to me i can be a better preacher do you know what this means if moses had been patient with god to believe everything god was telling him he would not need somebody to help be his mouthpiece I believe by this God had plans to heal him and correct him but Moses said well I believe this about you but this limitation and said fine since you do not believe I can solve this I will bring somebody to remedy it who had made man's mouth or who make it the dumb or deaf or the seeing or the blind have not I the Lord the Lord was challenging him verse 12 give us verse 12 now therefore go and i will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say listen when you encounter god the next thing that happens is that you must discover yourself who am i what did god make out of my life let me tell you who you are john 1 6 these are the realities that you must find in your faith adventure john 1 verse 6 please help us media there was a man sent from god everybody please shout this say sent from god one more time now mention your name and say sent from god one more time let the devil hear it Joshua Selman sent from God. Not a Yoruba person, not an Igbo person, not a Hausa person. That only defines the geography of your arrival. But he says there was a man. I am a man, but that's not all about me. I was sent from God. It matters where I came from because he that cometh from above is above all. That means knowing that I was sent from God already gives me the courage to know that every mountain that stands before me, I know that I saw my, my origin is an advantage. Are we learning now? Listen, let me tell you the truth. We live in a world today that can bully you psychologically. You will find yourself in the midst of people who may think they are richer than you wiser than you better than you as a man of god if you don't know who you are you cannot be a good pastor insecurity will make you destroy your people you will see people wealthier than you smarter than you you must be able to celebrate them without feeling intimidated because you have discovered that if not for anything as an advantage in your life you are sent from god someone prophesied say sent from god 
apostle you don't know my cgpa i sympathize with you and we pray that it will rise but in the interim no matter what goes wrong never forget this send from god he said when i sent you lackest thou anything there is abundance that follows being sent not just abundance of money abundance of grace and god is able to make all grace so do not laugh at what i do not seem to have now remember i am sent ah, carry that mentality i am sent i have only two members but i am still sent i know that i don't have a job yet 10 years as a graduate but i am sent listen this is very simple but this is how god delivered some of us from all kinds of complexes regional complexes whatever kinds of complexes when he met gideon in judges chapter 5 and 6 he met a young man who had the destiny of a warrior and a deliverer but he was hiding and he said oh thou mighty man of valor gideon said don't flatter me i know where i come from the least in my father's house and even the last born waiting for social media or waiting for fans or waiting for individuals to tell you who you are is already a disaster on arrival they looked at jesus and called him a murderer they looked at jesus and said you lied that you would destroy the temple but he stood with confidence it is powerful to know who you are they said you are king of the jews and there was no pressure to defend himself some said they said you are this and that the only time he spoke was when pontius pilate said do you know i have the power to set you free said, ah you have gone too far uh -uh. no man can have anything except it is given it is within my power to call a legion of angels my silence is a strategy to regain dominion for the earth not weakness don't confuse my silence for weakness i know who i am can i tell you the truth when you know who you are as a man of god and as a great man you will know when to be silent over needless battles and you may be perceived as weak but you stand as strong because you know who you are if someone looks at you and says is it not your useless father I remember you you come from Ibadan you come from this place I hope you know that your family where you come from people don't rise and last can anything good come out of Nazareth and you don't need to insult them they are speaking their truth but your truth which is the truth according to scripture is that you are a man sent from God regardless the family I came through sent from God the womb of your mother only gave your spirit a body frame but believe me if you stay with god and he convinces you that you are sent from god then he can take you to the nations jeremiah chapter one please and verse five am i wasting your time this was the lord god of heaven speaking to a young boy who would later became be, become a great mighty prophet but as a little boy he was giving him a little history he said before i formed thee in the belly god knows you but do you know yourself and before thou camest forth out of the womb i sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations verse 6 here was the lamentation of an ignorant boy he said ah lord god behold i cannot speak why for i am a rebuke coming comes in immediately verse 7 the lord takes the time to rebuke him immediately he said say not i am a child say not i am a nigerian say not i am weak say not i am a female say not i am disadvantaged say not i can't speak english very well say not i am last born say not i am an offer if you really want to know who you are there are some say nots you must know what to say and you must know what to not say let the redeemed of the lord say so
let the blessed of the Lord say so let the great of the Lord say so because in this kingdom whatever you declare whatever you name that is what it becomes and whatsoever Adam called it that was the name thereof are we together God never called the people grasshoppers Satan never called the people grasshoppers they called themselves they say we were like grasshoppers sent from God let's rush to number three very quickly we're still in the season of preparation five things number one you must discover God number two you must discover yourself number three for sake of time you must discover your giftings and abilities ah this one this is one of the advantages of the pursuit of god in the place of preparation especially through service service in the house of god many people on campus did not even know they were going to be ministers it was as they served they discovered so i can sing okay there's an opportunity to go to the worship team from there some of them today are leading nations in worship you must discover your giftings and potentials because those are the tools that god will use to bless the nations through you exodus chapter 4 we'll read verse 2 and then we'll jump to verse 17. exodus chapter 4 let's hurry up please he says and the lord said unto him what is that in your hands and he said a rod please look up do not begin your journey of destiny if you do not know what is in your hands god will never send you unless he reveals to you what you are carrying verse 17 moses called what was in his hand a rod a gift an ability to sing i can just talk well and people listen to me and when he submitted that rod listen carefully there's no time i would have shown you how the rod is converted from just a rod to a rod that does signs and wonders the first thing moses did with that rod is that he surrendered that rod before the presence of god if you cannot lay down your rod to serve god it cannot become a rod that does signs and wonders it will remain a rod there are many people who have the gift of singing leadership and it stops there nothing supernatural no nothing extraordinary the touch of his presence has not come upon it can i tell you next time you go to worship god carry everything that is an advantage and worship him too don't worship him and your gift stand aside carry the gift let the gift worship him let your wisdom worship him let your beauty worship him everything that is an advantage in your life is that rod that will be used verse 17 thou shalt take this singing ability thou shalt take this grace to preach thou shalt take this intellectual prowess thou shalt take this grace for media thou shalt take this ability thou shalt take your first class your two one whatever it is wherewith that means every time there is a need for signs and wonders don't just be crying up and down remember the rod every time a generation ignores you god will say remember when we were praying and fasting where is that ability to prophesy that i gave you now is the time to bring it out that is the rod of god in your hand we are going to pray i just saw light like eight people i saw the anointing coming on them now please help them eight of you i just saw light coming upon you please help them we we'll have some time to pray but i need you to get this in the name of jesus that grace there is a birthing of something within your spirit man just pray in the spirit in one minute Ah, there is a rod of God in your hand. You may look like you are ordinary. You are not just an usher. You are not just a worshiper.
you are not just a campus president you may start serving tables but there is grace upon you please sit down please sit down just help those under the anointing everybody say a rod can i tell you anybody who tells you he was sent by god tell him show me the rod that he gave you your rod is what decides your relevance when you stand before pharaoh ah. moses what do you have in your hand an ordinary ability to do good designs what do you have i found out that there's an unusual grace every class i go to i'm a class monitor everywhere i go i am a leader but is it really something do not make the mistake of the wife of the prophet who said i have nothing except everything unrefined looks small a rod hear me there are people who are too big to bring their gifts and serve in the house of god there are many people who began to serve god with sincerity of heart they never knew they would be preachers they didn't even know the fellowships would be handed over to them or one day they will become head of this there are people who learn leadership while they serve they learn discipline while they serve they became prayer warriors while they serve some of them were not even born again when they came on campus but service listen if you have found your rod it's time to throw that rod before his feet and to say rod you will join me in serving him i don't know what to do with you but let his presence give definition everything david had he used it to become a mighty man his ability to sing he used it to write songs his ability as a warrior he brought victory for israel please don't forget this teaching tonight there are some of you who are saying apostle god anointed the great people but there is nothing about me the only thing about me is that i am beautiful ask esther ask esther how beauty can take someone to a palace and give her the leverage to deliver god's people from the wickedness and the plot of her man hear me everything god has given you however it cannot serve the nations if it does not serve god first the first person the rod served was not israel the first person the rod served was god he threw it god said if you believe in me throw that rod at my presence and moses hear me let me give you an assignment tonight when you go back home go and write down everything that constitutes an advantage in your life while you are writing it the devil will be saying you are joking write it if you are beautiful write it you are handsome write it you are intelligent write it an unusual grace to speak write it everything that is an advantage you are writing your rods these are the rods that god will use to do mighty things leadership ability write it you found that there is a prophetic grace within you don't let anybody despise you refined or not just write it you are a prophetic worshiper every time you lift up that voice something happens write it down hear me listen let me teach you what you are doing the mystery of what you will be doing is found in philemon 1 verse 6 it says that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in christ you must acknowledge every good thing you have acknowledged all the bad things that are in you that the communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in christ sit down let's make progress so the season of preparation affords you the opportunity to number one to know god to discover god number two to know yourself number three to find that rod in your hand your giftings and your ability number four very quickly you discover 
and receive your assignment during these periods of preparation the assignment that will represent the mandate of your life comes during the period of preparation assignments can be discovered and assignments can be received assignments can be discovered if you are david you may not receive your assignment you may discover it as you are taking food david write it for reference we may not have the time to read as we see in the life of david first samuel chapter 17 when you read from verse 17 to 52 david was sent to go and give his brothers food because they were in the battleground that was when he went and he saw this beast roaring and he said what is the meaning of this the nation of israel were all scared including king saul and he said listen i am able to take this guy they said who brought this stupid boy to the battlefield now and he said no 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 don't mock me i have discovered the rod in my hand while i was in the wilderness i was not just tending sheep i i went to tend sheep but in tending sheep i discovered i had the ability to kill anything and listen to me if you allow me use my rod when he used that rod he brought goliath down and that began the journey that would end up leading him to become the king of israel can i tell you this you must trust god for grace to find your place in destiny stop saying people don't like me nobody is pursuing me nobody will look for you for nothing until you find your place lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will how about joseph if you are joseph you would not only discover your call you will receive it genesis chapter 37 from verse 3 remember the story the story is 3 to 11 Genesis 37 from 3 to 11 when the young boy went to go and sleep the Bible says the father gave him a coat of many colors I am confident that the sermons you've encountered have been a source of blessings elevating your life and inspiring a heartfelt commitment to serving God wholeheartedly we warmly invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel ensuring you stay connected and never miss any of our upcoming videos by activating the notification bell your subscription represents more than just a click. It signifies a commitment to continuous spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled journey with us as our channel aims to be a sanctuary for both spiritual seekers and believers alike. We firmly believe in the transformative power of God's Word, and our goal is to share messages that deeply resonate with your soul. Join our community, subscribe, and let the radiant light of divine wisdom illuminate your path thank you for being an integral part of this uplifting journey and may god's abundant blessings overflow in your life amen you can follow us on all our social media handles at flaming channel and visit our website at www.flamingchannel.com thank you and may god bless you abundantly